Hello, my honors chemistry students. The problem we're going to deal with today is how many moles are contained in 32.7 grams of zinc? This is a time-honored classic honors chemistry problem in which you're given grams of substance and asked to convert grams of substance to moles of substance. And typically the pathway to do that is to use molar mass. And in this case, since zinc is an atom, you're going to use the gram atomic mass of zinc to convert from this amount of zinc to a given number of moles. Because in chemistry, the unit of comparison for the amount of matter of a substance is not grams, but in fact, it is the amount of moles. For the mole is a standard international system unit for quantity of substance. As always with this type of problem, and this is a fairly straightforward problem, I want you to write down what's known. What pieces of information do you need to know in the problem to solve the problem? You know that you're given a quantity of substance, which is the mass of zinc, which is 32.7 grams of zinc. That's straightforward. Every time you write down a measurement, every measurement should have a unit, and that unit should represent an appropriate quantity of matter. In this case, grams represents mass. You know that you're going to be asked to calculate the number of moles of zinc. You don't know how many moles of zinc 32.7 grams of zinc represents, but you do know that it's going to be expressed in mol of zinc. That's a little bit funny that mol is the unit for moles, but that is in fact the case. mol is the unit of moles. So in essence, you're going to be asked to convert between grams of zinc to moles of zinc. And when you think about how you might approach doing that in your solution. I typically ask my honors chemistry students to diagram a solutions pathway. And what I mean by that is, how are you gonna convert from grams of zinc to moles of zinc? So the solution pathway for me here, I want you to write down that you're gonna start with grams of zinc and convert grams to moles of zinc. The question is, how can you do that? Well, you have three molar masses. As we went through in the first problem in the last couple of days, one type of molar mass is gram molecular mass, the mass of one mole of molecules. The second type of molar mass is gram formula mass, which is the mass of one mole of formula units. And the third type of molar mass is what we call the gram atomic mass, in this case, the gram atomic mass of zinc. That's the mass of one mole of atoms of a particular substance, which in this case is zinc. That value can easily be found on the periodic table by looking up zinc and looking for what is called the atomic weight or the atomic mass. In this case, the gram atomic mass of zinc is 65.37 grams of zinc per mole of zinc as recorded on the periodic table. Now keep in mind that this number represents two different, the same thing in two different ways. In this case, we're looking for the number of moles of zinc in a given amount of grams. So in this case, this is referred to as the gram atomic mass because it's the mass of one mole of zinc atoms. On the other hand, this could be viewed as the mass of an individual zinc atom, but then the units would be different, which would be atomic mass units. So that nonetheless gives us a relationship between grams and moles. 
And in this known unknown solution style of problem solving, I always like you to make a statement which leads the grader to consider what you're actually trying to calculate. So first you're going to calculate the moles of zinc because that is your ultimate objective. As always, I want you to restate the unknown statement in your solution by saying, I'm looking for the moles of zinc. I don't know how many moles that is, but I do know it will be expressed in MOL of zinc, the unit for mole. Always start with the quantity that you've been given. So you've been given the fact that the mass of zinc you've been given is 32.7 grams. So you record 32.7 grams of zinc and you're going to convert that to moles of zinc. The question is, how do you go from grams to moles? This is the beauty of dimensional analysis because you're going to use units to be your guiding principle in the solution. In other words, you need a relationship between grams and moles. Keep in mind that whatever unit you want to achieve, you put in the numerator. And whatever unit you want to eliminate, you put in the denominator. So we're going to use gram atomic mass in that way because we're looking for moles and we want to eliminate grams. Grams cancels out and that leaves you with moles. And when you actually do this calculation, and let's go ahead and do that now, I'm just gonna kind of put this calculator right in there. Let me turn this on. We'll run through this calculation with you. We're gonna take 32.7 and essentially divide that by 65.37 grams. Oop, I need another parenthesis there. I probably didn't need a parenthesis, but I'm gonna put one in anyway. And when I press enter, I get a value of 0 0.500229 grams. Well, in thinking about that, more on that later, we need to make certain that we have the same number of significant figures in our answer as we do in the least precise measurement. If you think back to earlier in the year, you can determine the number of significant figures in a measurement by using a simple technique called the Atlantic Pacific Significant Figure Technique. And essentially what that does is it simplifies all 20 rules for significant figures into one guiding principle. If the decimal point is present, you come from the left or the Pacific side because the Pacific Ocean is to your left on a map until you get to the first non-zero digit. Every digit thereafter is significant, so 32.7 would have three significant figures. You do not use constants like gram atomic mass to determine significant figures. So therefore, if you have three sig figs and 32.7 grams of zinc, you should have three significant figures in your answer. Again, the decimal point is present. So therefore, you can draw an arrow through all the zeros till you get to the first non-zero digit. Every digit thereafter is significant. So the five, the zero, and the zero is considered to be significant. Now, you may note on the calculator, the next digit is two. We can drop the two and it has no impact on the zero. So therefore, the correct answer is 0 0.500 moles of zinc, which is half a mole of zinc. And when you think about that answer, it makes sense because the reality of it is, is 32.7 is essentially half of 65.37. So therefore, the answer of 0 0.500 moles of zinc should make good sense. 
That being said, I want you to start practicing converting your answers into standard scientific notation. So therefore, I want you to move this zero to the right of the first non-zero digit, which would be five. We're moving the decimal point one place to the right. So therefore, our answer is going to be 5.00 times 10 to the minus first moles of zinc. Now, when you consider that answer, I usually handle scientific notation this way. In other words, you can rewrite 0 0.500 in this fashion. I can rewrite it 5, 0 0.500 times 10 to the zero, because any number raised to the zero power is one. So basically, you're not changing the, the value of the number, you're just rewriting it. So when you move this decimal place, one place to the right, you're making 0 0.500 one power of 10 larger. So to compensate for that, you have to make the exponent one power of 10 smaller. So thus, the exponent here is 10 to the minus one. And once you arrive at that answer, I want you to box your answer as your final answer. And quite simply, that's how you convert grams of an atom to moles of an atom by going through gram atomic mass of zinc. 